Today we have the $121,000 Platinum Escalade. We're gonna take a deep dive into this Escalade and see if it gives you everything you could possibly want for a full-size luxury 4x4. Today we're gonna to take a look at the exterior, the interior, get it out on the road for a test drive. Let's get started. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and take a look at this Platinum Escalade. So I showed you the premium luxury before. This one's gonna be all about this Platinum model, which is a top-end model, and you're gonna see that with this massive sparkly grill everything looks pretty nice up here as well what do you think of the front end i think the overall look of this escalade is very nice we've got full led headlights here as well unfortunately accessory mode is really annoying on cadillac and it doesn't let me turn the blinkers on unless the vehicle is running but we've got this slick led daytime running light running right down there and i think this whole front end looks really cool i have a night video showing off these headlights and they are really awesome now the paint color here is radiant red tint coat it might look a little bit more red red on the camera it's a very deep pretty red and we've got 22 inch wheels on here as well very bright and shiny with this top end platinum model what do you guys think there's two different lengths this is the shorter one it's about 212 inches long so the long version's 227 inches long. This one still gives you roof rails up above. This has great passenger space. It's just not as good of cargo space as the long version primarily. And of course, you're gonna get these slick Cadillac LED vertical taillights. Everybody's gonna know you're driving this Cadillac at night because it just looks so distinct. Not to mention you got this nice looking exhaust outlet back here. Let's go ahead and take a deeper dive. And in the back, there's a couple really cool things. The first being the fact that you have this lift up glass. That is awesome. I love this. You don't see this hardly ever anymore, but you can throw some stuff back here without lifting up this entire thing. It's just a nice little feature. The other thing is that you have the hands-free opening and closing. There we go. Of this lift bag. So you can do this to open it or to close it. Now, as we take a closer look back here, you know, I think that behind the third row is a little bit better than I was expecting for it being a short version. Now, the long version definitely does give you more space. I'll put the comparison numbers on the screen, but there are some things to appreciate here. You still get tie down here, get a cargo net hook right there. It is pretty good size. Underneath of there, you get a little tiny bit of storage as well, and there's a spare tire under the vehicle. Another plus is, check it out, over here, you can power some items. So you've got a three-prong outlet right there. And another nice thing is, we've got power folding seats. Ooh, that's not good. Thought that headrest was supposed to fold. Okay, I just had that seat a little too far back and reclined, but then you get a nice flat space right here. If it's a two-row, you've got a ton of space here. And check it out, you can even still fold down these second row seats from back here, which is good. The headrest will automatically fold as well. Boom, and they fold nice and flat. You can pop them up out of the way. I'll show you that in a little bit too. So there's some different cargo variations that you can do back here. So it's a very big vehicle. Now with the key fob, General Motors gives us remote start on here. It's a nice key fob. You can open everything up on here as well, even the fact that you can open up the rear glass, which you saw, everything looks pretty nice right here. So when you approach the vehicle, the mirrors will unfold. It's going to, the, the running boards will pop out. You get lighting that comes down from the ground. The whole vehicle starts to light up. And you can see that in my night video. It is pretty awesome. Now let's look at the seats. You'd expect something pretty awesome in a vehicle this expensive, right? So on the Platinum models here, we've got semi-aniline leather. We even have speakers in the headrest. These are perforated. These definitely are nicer than the high country suburban that I was recently in, as they should be. But these feel nice. They're soft. They're a little bit more plush. I'd say a little bit more cushioned as far as the way they feel compared to the suburban seats. They've got a ton of adjustments on here, which we'll talk about. Not everything shows up down here, but you can press this button for massage, adjust it on your screen with this button, four-way, well, I'll show you all the controls here in just a sec. You've got ventilated seats, heated back and bottom, or just heated back on there as well. And you've got memory settings right down here. The steering wheel is also power tilt and telescoping, so you can have it automatically move where you have your memory setting set for the seat and the steering wheel. One note is that this is a tall vehicle, but there is not a 
grab handle there or over there, but this does have the adjustable suspension to change ride heights. Now by using a lever on the seat, it's gonna bring up this menu where you can go through these different massage functions on here or just move different parts of the seat as well. So check this out. There's a lot that you can do. You can do the seat back, you can squeeze it in and out like that. You can do different parts of the, of the you know, different sections of the seat and move that too. So it is pretty nice and comfortable and there's a lot of different adjustments overall. The steering wheel is also leather wrapped and heated minus this section right here. Of course, this is the clear section plastic area where your Super Cruise will show up a green light when that's active. So heated, massage, memory, um, all the different adjustments, it's pretty nice. The one thing though is that I don't think the passenger has their own memory settings. In the top trim, that should probably be on here. Now the back seat, things are nice here too, but there's one thing missing. There's no sunshade in here. You know, in an expensive vehicle like this, I'd expect maybe a power sunshade or at least a manual sunshade. I'm surprised they don't give you that, but you've got nice materials on the door decent bottle holder area right there. This back seat gives us grab handles and we've got the rear entertainment package back here too. You got vehicle Wi-Fi, HDMI, you've got different things you can play on here. And these are pretty big screens with some adjustability. And all of these rows get the same semi-aniline leather. So this is very nice. You've got clear uh, manual levers right there. Now, sitting behind myself, I'm five foot nine. This is where I have the seat. Obviously, good space in here. This is a big vehicle, and these seats are still fairly comfortable. One thing I appreciate is the armrest here, even though it's not a ratcheting armrest. Back here, we get our own single zone automatic climate control, including heated seats here as well. We've got these pop out cup holders right here. They are kind of small in their rubber, so stuff does not go in and out all that well, but at least you do have those as options. And then down below is where your electronics can plug in. Two HDMI ports for each screen, one for each screen, USB-C. And then right over here, you got a three prong outlet, 110 or 120 volt. One crazy thing, we have heated seats in here, but $120,000 and these seats are not ventilated. That's a surprise to me. But let's go ahead and show you. We can move the seat forward. We can recline the seat backwards. We can scoot the seat backwards. So there's a lot of room in here. Not to mention, we get our own little speakers back here. We get air conditioning vents as well. And of course, these back passengers are truly the ones that benefit from these giant panoramic roofs. Now, third row access is okay. So you can fold the seat down and then you can pull this again and it pops up out of the way to get into the three passenger third row. All right, now sitting right here, I have this seat farther forward in the track and there's still good room right there. That one is all the way back and there's still some room. My knees would not be pressed up against it, but it is tight if the seats are all the way back. And back here, third row passengers get their own USB-C charging port. We get little built-in cup holders into the door and overhead we get AC vents, LED lights back here. There's no third row panoramic roof or third row sunroof. All right, y'all, let's take a look at the interior details here of the rest of this Escalade. And I've got to say, I really do like the practicality and the layout of this interior. We'll talk about that in a second. But first of all, over on the door, if we don't get rained on, we've got a really nice soft touch material right here, some trim, soft armrest, a decent size grab handle as well, automatic one touch windows there. Kind of surprises me on this $121,000 vehicle that Front windows are automatic one touch up and down. The back windows are only automatic one touch down, not up. That's surprising to me. Then we've got some storage down here and kind of a small bottle holder there. Lots of controls here from Cadillac, including a trailer brake controller right there, suspension control, all wheel drive control, or four wheel drive controls too. Now Cadillac gives us some interesting screen options here. We've got a 7.2 inch screen OLED there. Right here, you've got a 14.2 inch OLED screen. Sorry, focusing right there. So 14.2 inches, seven plus inches right there. And then over here, you've got a 16.9 inch OLED screen. This is just one big giant cluster running across. Plus you have a head up display that shoots out of there. And with our windshield wipers, we have rain sensing windshield wipers. Steering wheel, I do like these controls for the most part. You've got a simple layout. There's no audio controls on the back of the wheel. It's just on the front. Your Super Cruise button is right there. Heated steering wheel button right there. 
And this right here, when we get into our test drive, you'll see little flashing lights right here um, paired with this. That's what keeps basically keeps tabs on you to make sure that you've got your eyes on the road while Super Cruise is engaged. During Super Cruise, you'll have a green line if everything is good to go. It will be blue when it's searching and preparing for Super Cruise or just off and blank like this when you don't have it going. I have a full demo on that Super Cruise system if you wanna check it out. But quick look at this display over here. So you've got a few different things. You can go through different trips, trip one and trip two. You can have it blank. We've also got the option to change what we see right here. So it's on the gauge. We've got this augmented reality camera, which you can also have on there, but unfortunately it's raining, but it's basically a front view camera to show you everything in front of you. And then at night, you'll have night vision, which I also have a video showing how well that works. Of course, you can control the brightness. You can also adjust your head up display there. So go back to the gauges here. We can see our gauges on there. Don't mind the blinking, that is just showing up on the camera. You can customize what you see over there. Otherwise, this stays pretty steady and then you can use your steering wheel to controls to control the audio that shows up right there. Now this display right here, it's a touch screen, but you can also control it with the control dial down below, which I'll show you as well. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both wireless, but look, it takes up such a small portion of the screen. It doesn't conform to the curved nature of it. Just one little complaint there. Now, audio wise, this has an impressive, oh my goodness, 36 speaker. It's an AKG studio reference system. You can adjust things right here. So go to sound, you can adjust your equalizer. You can even adjust the sound mode depending on who's in the vehicle, how much 3D sound there is. Now it does sound nice, but I was recently in a BMW with Bowers and Wilkins sound and that sounded better than this by a fair margin to my subjective ears. Another cool thing here is there's this little button right there. It's conversation enhancement to relay your voice to the rear passenger so you don't have to turn and yell at them. Now, if we shift into reverse and take a look at the 360 camera, it's a very nice 360 camera. So you can see all around the vehicle, pretty much wherever you want, this kind of a, a projection right here, but you can actually see like next to a tire, for example, you got multiple different views, depending on where you are, you can see the same thing for the back of the vehicle as well. It's really nice. You also have a hitch view just like that and if we're backing up so you can let's see here all right normal if we're backing up you can have those dynamic lines or you can have the hitch line it's up to you in your settings you've also got a parking assist advanced parking assist as well so parallel or perpendicular parking to either side this thing will do it for you coming down we've got dual zone climate control up here technically three zone including the back but I like the nice, simple layout on here. It's easy to use. It looks really sleek as well. Down a little further, this shifter is interesting. P for park, and then you've got a little button on the side and you just squeeze, move it wherever you need to go. It just reverts back to the same position. P for park. Automatic brake hold up here. These are kind of hidden buttons. Lane keeping system when you're not using Super Cruise. Auto stop start and an automatic brake hold. Back from here is your actual controller. So you have shortcuts for your stuff up on the main screen. I love the shortcuts. You can use this and it works really well. Volume knob as well. Sorry if that was out of focus the whole time, but this is a really nice setup because it's comfortable to reach and have your hand there. And you can still touch up there without a problem. And you've got a couple of good size cup holders here. You've got a little storage area up there, USB-C, USB-A, and this right here is pretty cool. This is your wireless charger. It works well, keeps your phone out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. I think that's great. Next to this big old center console, there's a little storage area down there, which has worked good for a couple odd items. Now this Cadillac armrest is nice and comfortable. It is padded, it feels good. You could even put a phone sitting right here resting, lift it up. So this is unique. You have this cool light in here but this is also refrigerated. Got this little chill button right there so you can keep your stuff cold. You've got a couple of USB ports and an SD card port. 
Otherwise, you can just use it as a normal storage area. Cadillac gives us a locking soft opening and soft lined glove box. Nice trim and materials carry on all the way over there. Look at that speaker grill up there. Everything looks really, really nice overall in here. We've got a digital rear view mirror or an automatic, automatic dimming rear view mirror. I love the camera mirror because you get great visibility out the back. This is your area to open up your lift bag. You can control just how far it opens depending on where you have this set. You can also fold down the rear seats, LED interior lighting, three garage controls. We've got a big old panoramic roof right here. It goes back quite a ways. With this AKG speaker system, you've got them in the headrest. You've got them up on the roof in different areas as well. Even in the back of the vehicle, it's pretty awesome. All right, y'all, let's talk about the powertrain quick. So I've talked about the powertrain of the Escalade before. You can get the V with a ridiculous amount of horsepower and torque. You can get a three liter inline six diesel, which I just recently drove in the Suburban. Not a lot of power, but good torque. Or you can get the standard 6.2 liter V8, 420 horses, 460 pound feet of torque with a 10 speed automatic. And we've got four wheel drive. Now, I do like this engine. It definitely, it's my preference to have a naturally aspirated engine. However, you've got some turbocharged options out there with other brands that can really pump out a lot of power but you have the v option here too if you really really want a lot of power this can still tow over 8,000 pounds although mpg is terrible now first impression is that the escalade is just very smooth even though it's got big wheels we have this air suspension here everything is nice and plush and comfortable and rides well i mean this just kind of glides over so many things i was just in the suburban that had the air suspension as well and i don't know all the differences and nuances between the two but i think this escalade feels smoother as it should for the price it's just very very nice to drive and you've got nice ride height you've got good controls i love the screen and the controls for the most part you can touch the screen we've got convenient controls right here as well steering wheel controls work just fine and this i've got tape on here to cover up the flashing red lights that would happen on the camera um, <clears throat> otherwise your super cruise shows up right here with a green line you can turn that off or on but it is a monthly subscription in order to have super cruise Super Cruise is the hands-free, eyes-on-the-road driving system, which I've got a full demonstration you can see in the description below. All right, now a quick note, we are in tour mode, which is like a normal mode, the standard mode. We'll go into sport mode in a little bit, but here's a little pedal. Now you get nice sound out of this V8. It's got this natural aspiration so you've got this consistent pull of power instead of the turbocharged engines with a quick boost of power and i really do appreciate and like the way that it drives here's a couple bumps in the road and boom i mean those were decent sized holes you probably couldn't tell on the camera but it just went right over them it's like they didn't hardly exist more uneven bumps and stuff and it just soaks it up obviously you do feel it but this Escalade does a very nice job of giving you this plush luxury ride and you've got comfortable seats. You've got a massage function that you can control on here. The overall driving dynamics, this is not a sporty vehicle. Even though a lot of vehicles at this price point offer both luxury and sport, this one doesn't, but you can get the V model if that's a real priority for you. What I mean by not sporty is that it feels heavy in corners. It's not a great handler but you still get good power. So that V8 really does make some noise. It roars a little bit. Let's put us in sport mode. So automatically you could feel it downshift. Graphic on here shows the steering, suspension, the engine and the engine sound are pretty much at their max as far as their aggressiveness. Partial pedal. You could definitely hear the extra sound on there. Oh yeah. Pedal down. 
So you definitely get some more sporty sound in here if you want. That is an option. I've just kept it in normal mode, but you also have off-road mode, a tow haul mode, and your own customized mode as well. But you can just casually cruise in here. The Super Cruise is really nice and stress-free for the most part for hands-free driving if you trust it. But there's not much to complain about in this Escalade. This window does have the laminated glass, so obviously that is going to help with noise suppression on the wind. And it's a very quiet ride overall. You can probably tell. You can hear a little bit of, of tire noise, but for the most part, it's a very quiet, comfortable, plush, and luxurious ride with good power. So to wrap things up, this thing gives you pretty much everything you can want. You've got power, you've got luxury, you've got a lot of different features. You've got size and space as well. In some areas, it's not completely over the top, like a 50-way front passenger seat or something, but you still get massaging functions. The second and third row don't get quite as much as you might expect, like no ventilated seats there or no heated third row seats, but hey, it still gives you a lot of features and a lot of luxury. So for $121,000, is this where you would put your money? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.